Naptown Tuner here. I just set up my camera on top of my light. So I'm getting you the best view possible. All I ask is that you give this video a thumbs up. What am I doing in this video? In this video, I'm taking the top of the engine apart. I'm gonna take the whole cylinder head apart, but first I'm gonna take the cam tray off. I'm gonna show you how to remove the cams, how I remove them anyway. I'm gonna show you how to put them back. Let's just get started. You guys have a really tiny, short attention span and I gotta get moving. So, you go boom, 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 boom. Watch how I do. Now, the whole entire cam tray is loose. Is it important to get it in time first? No, because we're taking it apart. When you put it back together, you put it back in time. Am I gonna say that's not a, it's a horrible idea to put? No, if you wanna put it in time, put it in time. Now, I did not pin my tensioner. I don't care about my tensioner. I'm taking it, I don't care about a lot of stuff. I'm just taking it apart. So this chain, the cams are loose. Did you see how the cams kind of popped up? Is it maybe a little bit better to pin the tensioner? I'm not gonna disagree with that. Is it necessary? I don't believe so. Especially since we take the cam tray off. Look, I just popped this exhaust cam out. Now, the, the most important thing about this is it's covered in oil and you want to keep it clean so i prefer to put it in one of my empty drawers of my toolbox and then close the drawer for now i'm putting it to the side i'm in a hurry everything's in beautiful shape with both of these camshafts i can tell that all the journals are good if you'll notice the intake side has fatter rockers than the exhaust side. The exhaust side, these camshafts and the exhaust side, slide, okay? So they're spring loaded. So if I were just try to set this, let's say I'm putting it back together now, let's say Let's say this is the rebuilt cylinder head, and now I have my fresh cams and I'm putting it back together. Okay? You could put the intake in first, you could put the exhaust in first, it doesn't matter. If you just set your exhaust cam there, you'll notice that it does not fit. If you try to force it, what could happen is the very ends of the aluminum on these journals could, could get nicked up very easily, very easily. What I like to do is I like to, well, first off, I like to get some assembly grease. I'll take some assembly grease and I'll, I'll dap it up, all right? I'm gonna do another video that's more extensive. This is just a quick one to help, help a brother out. You drop your camshaft just on top there and then I take it like this and I just barely barely pull these in together all right now what I like to do is give it a tap like that now it's in the position where it can fit it's tricky it is tricky because if you do it wrong, you can spring a ball out. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you that for an example right now. I'm 
This camshaft has already been popped out. A ball and a socket has sprung out of it. I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna spring it out right here. See, there's, there was a ball and a socket in there and I, it might have just sprung out just now and I didn't even hear it. There's one. So the spring came out and the ball shot, all right? So if you go too far over, look, there's how many sections? One, two, three, four. There's four different sections. This camshaft is extremely expensive. This camshaft is junk. This one's in its spot, it's gonna be fine. Intake camshaft is much easier. All you have to do, set it in place, all right? I've got other videos where I show how to put the timing chain on. See this crud right here? If you're having your cylinder head rebuilt, the crud is gone because it gets it cleaned in their, in their acid tank or in their cleaning tank. Uh, but if you're doing it by yourself, you take a razor blade and you carefully scrape on it. It's not the most fun thing to do because you can get crud in your engine and it's probably a good idea to have a vacuum or something to, to catch the crud as you scrape on it. This was just about setting the cams in here and now, now we put the cam tray back on. So let's, this is just an example. I have a cam tray, now the cam tray, would I would, I would dap it up again. I would take my grease and I would dap, dap it all up. And I, also I would take my anaerobic sealer. You have to use anaerobic sealer. Audi has this lime green stuff right here, all right? Part number D154103A1. You go all the way around. Give me a bunch of uh, comments if you want to see it done properly all the way through, all right? I'm just giving a quick tutorial for a, to help a brother out. So once, once it's all dapped up and done, I'm just going to start. Now, all I did was set all the bolts in place. I started in the middle, I, I started right here, and then I kind of worked my way out. Now you want to take your torque wrench and go into your torque specs in sequence. That's all there is to it. When you're done, you can do like that with your cam. Make sure that your cams spin. I like to take my 18 millimeter, Always, after you're done with this, at least on the intake cam, I like to take my 18 millimeter and do like this. And if you can't pull this cam back and it springs back, something's bound up, something's wrong. Something's over tightened, something's in the journal bearings, something's screwed. If, you, if, it, if, both, of the, if both of the cams don't have an, a nice spring like that, they should be completely free. All right, this is just a quick Quick video, tell me in the comments that you want to see piston video, that you want to see everything done the right way all the way through a long version. Thank you. The reason why you have to use this special Audi sealant is because the cam tray and the cylinder head have to sit absolutely flush. There can't be any kind of thick silicone or something that changes the elevation of the cam tray and the cylinder head. It has to absolutely sandwich together perfect. This stuff allows it to sandwich together perfect and then it gets hot and over time this seals perfectly. So it, it doesn't seem like it would, like if you, if you just squirted this out on the surface or something, it would never get hot, but it hard, I mean. 
but the type of sealant it is, it's anaerobic type sealer that whenever it isn't exposed to air anymore, then it will seal up. So what's the other thing I was trying to think about? Uh, I'm going to put a link in the comment section for a torque spec booklet. You get all your torque specs from there. I don't need to sit here and rattle them all off. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me about stuff. Put something in the comments, even if it's like, cool, dude. Later, Naptown Tuner.